Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and today is all about deploying Windows 10 1809 with MDT 8450. Super excited because I finally got Windows 10 1809 within my volume license portal, and this is the reason why I'm doing the video. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, I am doing everything within a VMware workstation environment. I'm using my VMDT server, uh, my virtual server that I have used in the past with you guys, and uh, showing you guys that I downloaded the ISO already, uh, the Windows Enterprise version, 1809, 64-bit. I placed it inside my D storage. Uh, I have a folder inside my D storage uh, ISOs and Windows 10 V1809, I dropped it in there, okay? So within my VMware workstation, I am going to mount the ISO within my MDT server. So we need to right-click on the tab, go to settings, Within settings, we are going to go inside the CD DVD. We're going to click on browse, and then we are going to browse into the location of where you dropped the ISO. For me, it was storage, ISOs, and I had a Windows uh, 10 version 1809. Most likely, this is not how you have it in your environment, but within my environment, this is how I got it. Again, just wherever you have that ISO, find it, mount it. Uh, select it. Once you have your ISO image uh, file already browsed, you want to click on connected and then click OK. And then eventually your virtual machine will give you this. So the next thing you need to do is open up your deployment workbench. Okay. Within your deployment workbench, we are going to work with the operating system nodes. So I selected it. I'm going to right click on it, create a new folder. Now, if you guys have been tuning in with almost all my MDT videos, I love creating folders. That's just my thing. Uh, the folder name is going to be Windows 10 version 1809. Click on next, next, finish, done. I'm going to do this a little fast because this is kind of like really basic stuff. Hopefully you guys kind of understand how to create folders. Uh, now within that folder, I'm going to right click on it and do import operating system. Uh, we are going to do a full set of source files. Click on next and the source directory. So I'm going to click on browse and we are going to go this PC and then within this PC we are going to click our E drive which is our DVD drive right this is where we mounted our ISO so we're gonna click on that press OK done next destination directory name this is automatically generated for you within NDT you are able to change it but I left it as the default click next summary next again it's gonna start process this takes between I'll say three to five minutes it's not too bad because it's just grabbing all the content within the ISO and then dumping it inside your deployment share. Once it's completed, you should get this. This is awesome. It gives you a nice little summary of all the install WIM images. A lot of them are kind of imported inside your MDT. Click finish and there you go. Got a crap load of them. Uh, I'm going to work with the Windows 10 Enterprise. Okay. Next thing that you need to do is create a task sequence. So once you import your operating system, it's time to create a task sequence. Now, if you already know me, I'm going to right click on that folder and do a new folder. So the folder name is going to be a task sequence dash phase one. Click next, next, finish, done. Awesome. Now let's uh, on that new folder, we're going to right click on it, create a new task sequence. And we're going to give it a task sequence ID. Again, you can give it whatever you want. I'm giving it Windows 10 version. 1809 v1809 and the task sequence name is this click next uh, we are definitely going to do a standard client task sequence this is the default option so you don't you don't need to do anything here click on next and then it's time to pick your operating system so within the operating system because I created a folder I need to expand that and then pick my poison so why I'm going to pick is Windows 10 enterprise and a Windows 10 education x64 install.wim that's what I'm going to pick and I'm going to click on next. From here, you are able to specify a product key. I'm not going to do it, so I'm going to leave it as the default. Do not specify a product key at this time. Click next. Provide a full name, organization, and your home page. I provided this information. Most likely, this is going to change in your environment. Click next. Provide an admin password. Make sure you remember the admin password because this is going to be the local administrative account within your Windows 10 machine. So once you enter that, and confirm it click on next nice little summary next 
done, finish. Now this MDT server is the same one that I use within my Office 365 package when I create the package. So when I deploy this, Office 365 is going to be an option to deploy as an application package. So that's awesome. So I'm, I'm, I'm able to kill two birds in one stone. Deploying uh, Windows 10 version 1809 and also testing out my Office 365 package, which is awesome. Okay, next thing that we need to do is right click on the main uh, MDT root folder. You want to update your deployment share. You get the nice little wizard, next, next. And this process takes between five to 10 minutes. Once it's completed, you're going to see this and we are going to click finish. Now, really basic. I haven't gone into the properties within the deployment share and enabled like .NET and enabled PowerShell and that stuff. This is extremely straightforward kind of thing to get you guys up and running. Now, I like to push out my images with WDS doing Pixie Boot. So I open up my Windows Deployment Services. Uh, I expanded the server. I expanded my server name. And I'm going to go inside Boot Images. Now, within Boot Images, I don't have anything in there as of yet. So I'm going to right click on it, add a boot image, click on Browse. And we need to browse to what boot image I want. Now, this boot image is what's going to kind of go through the network. And when your computer, your workstation, your laptop, whatever is pixie booting, it's gonna it's gonna go inside your WDS and then locate this boot image to process the deployment and then kickstart it. So from here, we want to go inside the deployment share. So locate your deployment share. I dropped it inside the D drive. Now the majority of you guys might have dropped your deployment share within your C drive. I like to drop it inside a separate partition. So the D drive is where I dropped it into. Uh, click on deployment share. Within deployment share, you wanna go to boot. I'm only going to import your 64 bit. Click on open, next. You could change the image name if you want or the description. I like to leave everything as the default. Click on next, next again, it's going to process and done, finish. Now, one of the things I like to do within my WDS is right click on it and go to all tasks and then restart it. Okay, once I restart, it's going to restart the services. I like doing this because if something happens or I have any issues, it's going to tell me. Uh, but the majority of times it's going to do this. This is always a good thing. Successfully restarted the WDS server. That means it's up and running. Click OK and you're done. Now. This screenshot right here is me going inside this PC, which is, again, I'm using VM Workstation, so my host computer, I went inside this PC, I went inside the F drive, and within the F drive, I created a folder, and the folder I called it V1809, right? Because I'm going to Pixie boot within my VMware Workstation environment to uh, deploy that operating system, right? So I'm gonna double click on it, and I'm gonna copy this path, right? And let's go inside VM Workstation, we're gonna click on File, new virtual machine. Next again, for the operating system installation, I picked, I will install the operating system later. Click on next. Uh, the operating system type is gonna be Windows and a Windows 1064. Next again, provide the virtual name and also provide the location is gonna be in that F drive. And I just kept it real simple, V1809. Click next again. I left that as a default at 60 gigs. That's not that bad, it's pretty small, but I just wanna test out the Pixie Boot and the deployment process. Click next, finish, and I'm done, okay? From here, you wanna power the virtual machine. And once you power the virtual machine, you're gonna get this, it's trying to uh, Pixie Boot, okay? And if everything works well, it should start doing this, start Pixie over IPv4, and it should read your uh, MDT server. So this is the client IP address. This is the server IP address of my MDT. And this is the fully qualified domain name of my MDT. So that's awesome. So right away, click inside your virtual machine, click enter. And once you click enter, it's gonna start processing it. It's gonna contact the server. Once it contacts the server, it's gonna start loading up that file. Now that file is that boot image that we inserted within our WDS. So that's cool, all right? So it's gonna start doing this. So within here, click on run the deployment wizard and uh, provide your username, password, and domain. Now, this username should have full access to your MDT, so I gave it administrator, my password, and my domain, and if everything works well, and that account has full access to your MDT server, you should see your task sequence uh, options. So I only have one task sequence, and that's the one that we created. 
So click on it, click on next. You could automate all this stuff within custom settings.ini file, or you could customize it within a database, you know, hook up a SQL database within your MDT. Click next. Do not move anything. Next again, next again. Uh, I changed the time zone to Eastern time, clicked on next. So from here, we have the application that we created a while back. Uh, I did a video how to create and import Microsoft Office 365 within MDT 8450 with you guys. I never tested it out because I was waiting for Windows 10 1809. I finally got it. So I'm going to check that off and then click on next and provide an administrative password. Again, you can give this stuff within your MDT properties. Uh, because I did MDT out of the box, you know, just installation. I didn't really do much customization. That's the reason why I have all this crap popping up. Uh, provide an admin, confirm it, click next. Click on details and this is a breakdown of what's going to happen. Begin. It's going to start gathering all the local information. It's going to start installing the operating system. Once it's completed, you're going to see that it's going to go inside the desktop and my Office 365 is installing, which is a good thing. And here it goes. I moved all the windows to the side for you guys. And if everything works well, you should get a success with no errors, no warnings, nothing at all. And I did a WinVER command to show you guys that this is Windows 10 version 1809 with a build of 17.763, cool. And that's it guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of how to deploy Windows 10 version 1809 with MDT 8450. That's it, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Don't forget about hitting that like button and I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.